continue this discussion um, today. Before we begin our um, presentation and introduction of our speaker, um, let us um, go to God in prayer. Almighty, most wonderful and everlasting Father, we are grateful, O oh Lord, that we have this opportunity that we can come together in this fashion to listen to um, this discussion. We pray and hope that will bring enlightenment, will bring encouragement, will open our eyes to the various things, O oh Father, that will impact um, on us having lasting relationships, relationships with our um, employers, relationships with our partners, relationships, oh Father, with our friends, our families, our neighbors. We just ask, so oh, Father, that um, these um, golden nuggets that we will apply them, we will find, oh Father, the, 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 the value um, from these discussion. We ask that the speaker will present in a clear manner and that we will truly benefit from this discussion. We continue to pray for those who are, um, have the desire to meet with us and, to, and are making the preparations to join that they uh, be able to do so safely at this time. Father, we put this, our prayer to you through Christ and we pray, amen. Once again, we thank everyone for who are, who are online at this time for participating um, and joining us in our Navigating Life series um, hosted by the St. Andrew Congregation as we look to um, help our community. Um, we see the need where individuals um, want to be able to understand um, things about life that will help them to navigate um, in a chart their way in a better, be better light, a better way. And so these sessions are prepared for you and so we, at this time, we have our facilitators, um, Brother Andre Allen Casey, who's a Christian for over 33 years and a counseling psych psychologist for over eight years. He has hands-on experience in counseling and serving several congregations and entities. He's trained in Alabama at the Heritage Christian University. He holds a Bachelor of Arts degree in Bible with a minor in counseling. He also holds a master's degree in um, a master's, sorry, in counseling psychology from Northern Christian University in Mandeville, Manchester. Our main presenter for this evening will be Brother Trevor Smith. He's a member of the St. Andrew Congregation. He's a behavioral modification coach and CEO of the Success with People Academy. Um, Trevor, he provides unique perspectives on interpersonal relationships, relations, as well as he's a self-monitoring um, behavior, as well as self-monitoring behavior, he provides um, unique perspectives in these areas. He's an experienced educator with decades of experience in corporate coaching. He's a regular contributor to the Jamaica Sunday Gleaner newspaper. He holds an EMBA in business administration from the University of the West Indies. At this time, we are glad to have um, our presenters with us to lead this evening's discussion. And at this time, I hand over our session to Mr. Trevor Smith. Thank you, Brother Engel. Um, let me share my screen. Brother Andre, welcome. Okay, so just want to, I see Sister Rene has a hand up. Okay, all right, so last time we spoke about gaslighting and we wonder, you know, there, there might be persons who are, have not been or had not been there. Um, we were not quite finished. We wanted to look at steps to take if you are being gas, gaslighted. But I want to start tonight though by some cautions. I want to start by laying out what it is that we are not about and some of the pitfalls, some of the dangers um, that we want to avoid up front. All right? So let's, let's, let's be clear about that. So one of the first things that we are not doing is that we're not providing another label for you to put on somebody. 
We're not providing another nice word to put um, as an obstacle in your relationship. To say, see, you're gaslighting me. Yeah, I guess we, we're not, we're not, that's not the goal. Okay. So those, sometimes when we go through these sessions, people are quick to pick up stones to throw at others. So that's the first thing I want to make sure that we're not about that. That's not, that's not the goal um, for it. And be careful then that, that, you know, we see a taxi drive past and we say, the mother just like me, you know, but that's not where we are. Okay. So the other thing that I want to, for us to be clear about is that all of us, all right, let me let, let, let use the all then. Most of us at some point in time find ourselves being engaged in what could be termed a gaslighting event. Let me, let me be clear about what I'm talking about. So a gaslighting event could be a situation in which the person leaves and says, why? I tell you, man, we could have swear, so I mean, leave the thing there. Or we could have swear, so I saw this. Or we could have swear. So they are leaving the discussion with you with that feeling. And guess what? They're right. It's true. In truth and in fact, the feeling that they had was right. But you have so, um, you know, presented the case that they are now questioning the reality that they saw. So in essence, that is a gaslighting event. But are you a gaslighter? No, not necessarily. So I think where we have to go with it is the motive behind the gaslighting and the frequency, the, the consistency. So somebody then goes out deliberately and consistently to get you to start to question reality, start to have a clarity about something and then you start to doubt everything about um, what's going on. That is the manipulation and that then you can say this person is a gaslighter and I am being gaslighted. But so when we go through and we look at events where somebody say, oh you're so miserable, oh you're so fussy. It might be that you are fussy, <laughs> that you are miserable. It's not gaslighting. Okay. <laughs> So just be clear now that we're not giving you another patch to put on somebody forward and say, see, you, you, so you stay, you are, you are doing this. What we are about is to look at, a, this is a new concept. So that's why we we'll probably will retrace a lot of the steps that we went through last time. So even if you are here, it's important for to go through, but it is something that um, goes under the radar and, and people don't see it and it can be dangerous. And that's why we want to bring it out in terms of your relationships. You have persons who are being gaslighted and who are questioning, you know, they're in long-term relationships. You could have um, married couples that, you know, for years, um, the one or the other party has been gaslighted. And as a result of that, they're not living to the full, their full self. They're not, they are in fact, um, somewhat manipulated. So I just wanted to lay that down before um, we, we go on. I'm gonna ask Brother Andre to, as I put up the slide also to, to weigh in on that, that we're not here looking to um, find other means to promote conflict. Our, our objective is to create lasting relationships and to look for things to help relationships to last. And that's why we identify this as something that flies under the radar. and. It's not usually looked at, but Andre. Yes, thank you very much, Brother Smith. Um, again, I hope you're able to hear me, but uh, just to echo everything that you said, um, no labeling, um, notwithstanding, um, we have to recognize that there are motives and sometimes persons have bad motives. Sometimes persons set out literally to manipulate and to control the outcome of a relationship and so they said one way to do that is you know um i'm going to use i'm using this in a uh, uh, this is not the right word to use but i'm going to use the word reverse psychology <laughs> mm -hmm. but it's yep. you know um they use reverse psychology on on you um to to, to really get what they want um from the relationship um, or what they want out or from you. 
So it is an amazing way of manipulating you to get what they want from you. Um, and the term is gaslighting. So, um, so we're just letting you be aware of that. And, and for those who are doing it, to cease and desist, literally, is also right. to, to, say, to say to those folks who are doing it, say, hey, um, is, is this a healthy way to, 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 to even, if you want to, somebody to do something for you? <laughs> you can just be a little bit more direct. <laughs> you right. don't have to make them feel, feel bad about themselves in order for you to, to get what you want out of them or to put doubt in their minds when in truth and in fact um you know it's a clinical way of lying <laughs> or, a, or a unique rather way of lying you know so so all we're saying here so for those who are doing it we're asking you to, to cease and desist and for those who are not who don't recognize that it has been done to them you know can understand why you kind of feel like you're walking on eggshells you can't be right at no time at all might as well don't, you don't think about a talk because you know um again working this person, you're going to sound like you, 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 you don't have the sense or something of this, you know, you don't have a point um, to make, you don't have any, you don't have an opinion to give on something because again, turn back to say that, you know, you are probably stupid or what have you, all we're saying here. So, so it is on both ends. So we're really talking to, to, to folks that, that, that might feel, um, as if to say that they are the gas lighter and the gas lighty, <laughs> right? And, and just to say, hey, it is not a healthy behavioral pattern um, if you want harmony and if you want emotional intelligence um, from each person into the relationship. Amen. All right, so let me tell you what my, my real goal is, especially um, as we talk about lasting relationships. So a lot of what we have been doing, uh, you know, have been to focus on people who are looking to get into relationships. And um, I think you, those of you who have been on know my stance that take time, take time to know her or to know him. Um, and one of the things that we want to look at and to say to you, you know, I am happily married for many more years than I want to share, but I want to say to you, um, it's better to be single than to be trapped in an unhappy relationship. So that's so when, that's one of the things that I'm saying is that when you're going through this process, um, yes, nice six pack, you know, um, and whatever, um, you know, Coca Cola, all of those kind of things. Um, just bear in mind that at some point in time down the road, um, you might have to face reality um, where the physical is not enough. And so, as you are going through, here is something else to look at, um, you know, in terms of deciding whether to. <clears throat> pursue this relationship or not. All right. Um, Gary, you want us to go down a little bit further before you put in the questions? Unless it's directly to, related to what we have said. Uh, right. Uh, I think it was a question uh, as it related to the definition. What? Definition. Right. That's where we're going now. Okay, so you can continue. So I'll see if it addresses it. Okay. All right. Okay, so um, what it is basically, as I'm saying, is a pervasive attempt to undermine your reality. Yeah, so what you see as real, um, the individual uh, uses, and, it, and what it is, is really like a two part thing where usually one party in the relationship is being um, gaslighted, right? So it is a, is a consistent um, attempt to have you see things differently from what the reality is. And, and um, if I just, just go to where it comes from so you can better understand, it's actually a film. So the context, the, the, the concept came from this film. It was a book that was then a movie where um, Gregory actually um, had his wife, Paula, who had a lot of money and Gregory wanted the money. And so Gregory decided what he's going to do is he's going to do things to have Paula lose her um, sanity. So one of the things that he would do, for example, is that he would go and flicker, get lights up in the attic, whatever. Um, and um, this is just one of them. And, and, and Paula would say, why is the light flickering? <laughs> and, but, and Gregory said, Paula, Paula. <laughs> I really think you need to go and see somebody, you know, because what, what flickering, where? 
whatever. So that's the kind of idea is that, um, and, and it finally got to the point now where she did lose her thing. So that's the idea. The idea is, is that you see a reality and, and the other party is causing you to question whether that is really so or not. And after a while, as Andre was saying, we start to question everything. Can we make a decision? Can we? And so you, a dependence is set in. Because the person might remind you that you know you're not good with money. You know that, you, what, don't, oh, come on. But you know that every time you choose the place that we do, you know, the movie is, is a bad movie. No, man, you can't decide. So that's the kind of thing that we talk about. So I don't know if that helps you or if anybody else wants a little bit more clarity on it. So Gary? Sorry. Okay, right. That's, that's what I wanted to ask. Uh, what if it is that the statement, for example, um, you mentioned the person can't handle money. What if that is just reminding them of the reality? That is the actual truth of the matter. That's what we said earlier. Um, at the very outset, that's what we were saying, is that <laughs> be careful that it might be true. And as we go through some of the slides, you will see that it says, it now we have it actually in, in yellow highlight that says that it might be true. So that's why I'm saying be careful about just saying that this is being gaslighted. If you really can't handle money um, and that's the reality, well then the person is just drawing um, your attention to this fact. Yes? Okay, I appreciate it. So, so let me just share a thought with you though and, and, and tell you where the, the, the trick is. The, the, the competent gaslighter, if you want to put it that way, actually seizes upon like one incident of fact, a little piece of fact, and then tie it around. So maybe one time you did something and they jump down on that and then use it. So it's not as easy to say, no, that is not so, or yes, that is, you know, because usually if you're very skillful at it, you weave in um, a, a fact, you know, you didn't remember something. I said, well, you know, say you don't have a good memory. That's, that's where the, the, the trick is. Um, so, to just emphasize the point is that you do not then want to put yourself in a position where you um, reject all feedback on the basis that you are being gaslighted. That's another um, unfortunate um, approach to the thing is that you walk away with this now um, and everything, every feedback, every, every comment that you get, all the feedback that you get, you discard it on the basis that you are saying, no, child. This person is gaslighting me. Yes? I hope that clears it up. So yes, it can be factual. Um, brother Smith? Go ahead, Greg. I, I hope I'm not running ahead, um, but we can always come back to it. Uh, one of the, the things though, it is, we are also looking at the, 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 the motive right. of, of, the, of the gaslighter. Right. Remember, you know, so, so if you're just trying to, 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 to say something to someone, that, that, that's different. If, however, you know, there's a difference between expressing and exposing. If your objective is to express, then I don't think you're gaslighting. If, however, you want to expose and, and also it's all about you winning an argument or you coming out or the person coming out, your partner coming out looking worse and things like that. Um, what is the objective of the relationship? What is, what is the goal of the relationship? Do you want to always let your partner feel that they can't talk? Do you want to let the partner feel like they don't have a say, that, 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 that they, they, they don't have an opinion? So, so what is the goal of the relationship? And so if it's the harmony you're looking for in a relationship, then why would you want to gaslight the person? If you understand what I'm saying, what, what, what's the objective? So the motive here has a lot to do with, um, with, with, with who the gaslighter is. You know, sometimes the person who's been gaslighted don't even realize it, by the way. <laughs> and sometimes they don't even know. <laughs> you know and, 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 and this has book up. And then the gaslighter you know, feels as if this is the norm to continue to treat this person a particular way. And the, other, and the, and the person does, does again, does, it, it becomes almost natural. And until somebody's come to them and said to them, say, wait, why, why, why what, what happened? You, you, don't, you, you can't talk? What happened? What happened? And when they, start to, when they start to have a different experience with somebody else, though, they're like, whoa, 
yeah, why can't I talk? I have a voice too. You know, I have an opinion too. I did believe this. <laughs> why did my partner, you know, um, convince me otherwise? What was the goal? What was the purpose? And so that's what we also want um, our, our, our listeners and those who are participating with us to understand um, this conceptualization in relation to gaslighting. Yeah. I want to also move it outside of even um, the you know, personal relations like this. It's workplace. Let me, let me give you a specific example, um, an actual case. Okay. So this young lady comes into an export department um, as a newbie. Okay. Um, so she has to be taught, you know, what to do, etc. Go on and get permission before because you can't make, you know, serious mistakes in that, in that area. Um, so that goes on, goes on, goes on. Okay. Years after she's there, quite proficient, I am asked to come in and you know, work with the team because there are problems with, you know, um, with how the team is functioning. And <laughs> um, just recently, that is again, maybe a, 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 many years afterwards, I was talking to her and she said, boy, I still remember that situation because years after this lady is proficient, she, they're still kind of treating her as if she doesn't know what to do and that she has to get permission for everything. Now that is gaslighting, you know? Um, and <clears throat> this, the, what it, why I'm, why I'm putting it there as well now, because I want to put in the motive side, is that it gives the, 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 the team leader, the manager, power over her, right? Because you really are not in a position to initiate, to do things on your own. You need to come to me before. So that gives me power over you. Of course, it belittles the individual and it, it, it cripples her. So that's part of what I'm saying to you. The concept is, again, motive, what it is. That's the determining factor. And if, as Gary asked now, we're actually responding to a fact, then as the, the, the song goes and as we talk about it, speaking the truth in love. Yeah. If you speak in the truth in love, then you approach the fact that I can't handle money in a different way than if you, are, you want to control the funds. Yes? So, 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 so that's it. So again, there was another incident like that. I think we shared it the last time where that's exactly what somebody did, a gentleman did. Um, he was actually spending out the money and doing things, whatever it is. And when his wife would question, um, he would point out that, well, you know, she's not a good money manager. What he was actually doing is having an affair, spending out the money, but he didn't want the wife to have to question anything about their bank account, leave it to me. So those are, again, come back to motive and come, come back to, what do you say? If you feel that I can't handle money, what should you do? Should you help me or should you use it as a battering ram over my head? So, all right, so, so that is how we can distinguish the thing. So let's, let's, let's um, move on a little bit then. All right, I think we can skip this out. All right, so I think we can go beyond this as well because we kind of spoke about why is it relevant? Because um, usually it's, it's a power play, it's a power play. And I'm telling those of you who are young in relationships are about to enter into relationships look out these are there are some telltale signs as to um whether this person could move into that direction just look at how discussions go about whether you have an opportunity to to share and to and to make decisions and to and to live out who you are make just just look at that to see the extent of the controlling of, 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 you know, of everything in, in the part of the other person. You, you might be surprised to see that you're going to put yourself into a prison. All right. Okay, so Jasmine says, sometimes the partner feels so demotivated that when giving her op opinion, she always feels put down when not being listened to or given opportunity to talk. She no longer wants to communicate her feelings anymore and her self-esteem, um, just gets done. Yeah, that's that's what it is, and that's 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 part of the um, the control 
who cannot be identified on the job, just mention that. Um, where the whoever it is who has the power um, controls everything and 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 um, belittles your input. You you see, for example, um, that the approach that is being taken to do a particular job doesn't work. There's a better way. And you're on the shop floor, you see it, you do it every day, so you know that there's a better way. And you go to your supervisor with it, and he says, no, printer, it's all right. You know, you know how long we do this thing, printer? No, man, leave it alone. All right? And you do that four or five times, the next thing you just decide, say, you know something, let me just make sure that I get my weekly pay, and I just keep my mouth shut. And, and the organization suffers, and your supervisor believes that he has the power. That's, that's one way, is that are you living in an environment in which you are able to express yourself? You are able to live, off, live fulsomely. Um, it doesn't mean that you're not going to have conflict, you know. So that, that's the other thing. It doesn't mean that you're not going to have disagreements where um, you see the thing one way and I see it another way and, and, and you know, never the twin shall meet. That's all right. That's not gaslighting. Right? So just be careful now that we're not putting on, mailing up things on, on, on situations that are not there. Usually there is a, 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 either an existing power difference or an, a, um, an attempt to establish a power difference. And usually um, in relationships, if the person has that kind of tendency, you will start to see it. Just test. Um, and by the way, Sometimes we can invite that kind of approach where, um, let us say, take a dating situation where, so what do you want to eat today? <laughs> I really don't know, you know, you decide. Uh, where you want to go? Um, I really don't, anything you say. That can also then <laughs> invite a situation where that becomes the norm and without knowing it, both of you end up now in a situation because after a while, when that goes on for a very long time, then the person can say, how oh, come all of a sudden, how come you know, you know? That's, again, is, is something to watch for. Andre, you want to share on that? Because that is something that we can also invite by um, refusing to step into who we are and to be ourselves and to um, understand that relationships are partnerships and I did, you know, we should have some level of equality. Yes. Pa partnership, not ownership. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. Seriously. <laughs> um, you know, there is a, 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 I think the last time we had, we were talking a bit about this, uh, we had introduced the term dependent personality disorder. And sometimes a person with this disorder makes themselves um, victimized or become victimized by gaslighting. They become victimized by gaslighting. And, and the strong possibility exists is because they have that disorder, okay. dependent personality disorder. That is where any type of serious decisions has to be made, has to be made by someone else. They don't feel they have the requisite skill sets or capabilities to, to, to decide their destiny, you know? Um, they need somebody's decision to determine their destiny, literally. And so, um, so as you have rightly stated, you know, we, you, you, you set up yourself <laughs> to, to be lit. Sorry. All right. Sorry. But you set up yourself, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, you know, um, but yeah. you set up yourself, seriously. Absolutely. And, and, so, and, and so we're saying here that, that, that we, you, Maybe one of the things we, we probably need to talk about too um, is 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 what is it that you need to do as a person, you know, um, your own self relevance, um, your own yeah, when it comes to that towards the end, right, yeah. your, your right. own emotional intelligence uh, right. and, and and self efficacy, you know. But uh, yeah, we're going to talk about steps later on. Okay. Yeah, but here I want to double down a little bit more though on the power thing because it's not just then like, you know, employer, employee, or whatever it is. Let us, it can be in relation to attraction, okay? So let us say there's a situation where um, 
this young lady um, is just, you know, the, the person of my dreams. Yes. So a young man, this is, you know, I'm, you notice I'm shifting the gender around. This is the person of my dreams. I don't know who I can live without this person, etc. Um, that person does something and you rule it out. It's not possible because you do not associate that kind of behavior with this person who is your ultimate. And it continues, continues, continues down the road. So that again, you're setting up yourself for gaslighting because you cannot relate anything negative to the person. And you know where I'm going to jump into politics. That's what is happening right now in the United States. We are actually, Trump has said it, that he could walk down the road and shoot somebody and get away with it. Because that's what he's doing. That is gaslighting to the ultimate. His whole family is down with the thing and he's saying that this thing is nothing. It doesn't exist. So one person is saying to the nurse, how can I be killed? I am dying here from something that doesn't exist. But persons are there. Persons would go out into the cold of night without masks and expose themselves because of the view that they have of this person. And so you can also then, it's not just power in terms of saying, I have, I can fire you or so on. It can also be a level of attraction, a level of holding the person in such esteem that um, you can't see the negative. You can only see um, good things. And so that way, again, you set up yourself uh, because if that person then comes and tells you anything, you're going to buy it. So that is the heart of fake news, by the way, that you listen to the news that you want to listen to and you accept that as true. Yes? Okay. So I'm just giving you a broader thing. So it's not just about um, relationship, romantic relationship. This thing goes beyond that um, as to how we allow for others to... Um, Manipulate is a word they could use, um, or a reality. All right. So here are some ways of, of, of looking at it, all right? And again, some warnings down here that Andre talk about some of the disorders that could cause you to have these things. So not all of it is a relation, a, re, um, a cause of, because of gaslighting. But this can give you some hints though. Um, yeah. Ask yourself, am I too sensitive? Many times I do. Because your partner says, so, oh, you're so sensitive, man. Don't, I just don't like a joke when I run with you. Yeah, okay. So after <laughs> you go through enough of that, um, you might find yourself doing that. Yeah. This, this, this sense of, you're really not sure. Because what I'm saying to you, remember that? The, 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 the movie talked about actually the person went uh, clinically insane. Insane is not just wandering around. The person actually got mad. <laughs> Put it that way. All right. So uh, uh, a less um, whatever you call it, deeper state might be then that you just start to not so sure about things anymore because that's what it is. It is playing on your what you hold to be true. Yes. Always apologizing. Man, I'm so sorry. And, and guess what? Um, in, um, in situations, you start, your sentences, everything you're going to say, um, you start with that. You know, I'm sorry, but uh, I'm, so you, you, you actually live a life um, apologizing, sorry for, to the world. Uh, and it might go outside of with the individual as well. <laughs> can't understand why you're not even happy. That's it. You're, you're basically almost living in a chicken, Mary Hart, is there situation where you just kind of wonder, am I really allowed to be happy or am I missing something here? Yeah. And this is one of them I mentioned now about making the excuses for your partner. Yeah. No, man, he wasn't thinking, maybe he was tired or maybe she wasn't or so, you know, so we actually forgive the behavior. Yes? So we say about the president, 
okay, so he might have some bad spots, but his principles are there and he has good policy. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Um, I hope that I'm not offending anybody who um, has that, but we can move forward. You know something is wrong, but you can't put your finger on it. Part of the confusion, part of the doubt that is being sold. Yeah. This is a powerful one. This is when you start need to go to Brother Andre for cut of a therapy. You start to tell yourself lies as well. It's because the person actually exceeds. You actually believe that this is a put down. You actually believe that the person did something to hurt you. And then you say to yourself, no. And by the way, why are we talking about this? This is what I didn't want to say because it's such a disgusting statement is that it, it's because they love you, why I'm hit you. You know, that kind of stupid statement where women actually stay in a relationship where they are being physically abused because they believe that they love me, you know. So that is the, this is where that is now. That is the kind of, um, anyway, let me move on. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and we mentioned this, can make decisions. And this is where the self-esteem goes. Yeah. I'm not good enough. All right. You want to be in here, Brother Andre? Uh, right. Well, well, I'm not, no, I mean, just to say that uh, some of these things um, could also be the, the result of being gaslighted. Right. You know, so, so okay. because you're being gaslighted, then, then this is a, some of them is a position that um, one you have taken or is a position that has been given to you. You know, it, in other words, you have been placed in that position or this is, or it could also be, this is how you feel in the relationship. So I'm just saying some of these responses could be as a result of those three. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah, when you're in, these are manifestations of, of having been gaslighted. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, cool. All right. So common phrases. They might hear from your gaslighter. So these are some tips, but look at this, what I'm saying to you. They may be true. And so just hear them then does not necessarily mean that you are being gaslighted. Okay. Um, and again, um, motive, perversiveness, is it is a consistent thing? Is it the person that's trying to do this to you? Um, link again to the power relationship. Those are some of the things that you need to add to these, put it in context. So again, look at it, you're so sensitive. Um, insecure, you know, you know, you're really thinking that because you're so insecure. Those are things that give people power over you if you buy them. Yeah. So that's the other angle to look at. If I hear this consistently, and if I believe it, what does it do to the relationship? Does it strengthen me or does it undermine me? Does it give somebody strength over me or not? So that, that's another way to, to look at it. When we look at each one of them, if I were to buy this and take it on and internalize it, what would it do to the relationship? Would it bring us closer together? Would it help me to, be, to, to grow? Or would it diminish me in the relationship? Stop acting crazy. You know you sound crazy. You know that, right? Don't, don't you know that? Don't you know that you sound crazy? Yeah. And by the way, they, don't you know that um, is part of um, the reinforcement? So I'm not only going to tell you that, but don't, don't, but you know, right? You know. So that's part of where it goes. And you're just being paranoid. All of this is trying to push you to the edge where you let go of what you hold to be true. All right. All right. You just love trying to throw me off track. Yeah. So now, well, what is being done to you is being, what I want to talk about the reverse psychology, is, is being turned back at you now. So you are the one trying to throw him or her off track. Um, this is a clever one. 
I was just joking. So you dig in deep and then let it land. And then afterwards, you kind of said, touch your man and say, I was just joking. But there was no joke involved. The message is there. You have to understand um, how the subconscious works. When you start to plant things down there, it's not so easy to uproot. So the best thing to do is to block. Make sure that you don't file the thing incorrectly. Um, here's another one. You're just making that up. Where you get that from? <laughs> that could not, nothing could be further from the truth. Man, you know, say all these make up things. That's it. Or right, here's another one. It's no big deal. So you see something that is a problem for you, and it just person just undermine undermines what you're thinking. Just plays it down. That is as powerful as the other one of making a statement. They can, you know, they deny everything that you see as a problem and don't take it on. Then it's the same thing. Is that you start to question then, how come I think that this is such a big deal and this other person don't see anything wrong with it? Then you understand it. Yeah. It's no big deal. You are imagining things. There we go. Paranoid, imagining things, and you're overreacting. Same thing, that's part of the big deal idea too. So those are some of the things that we have to look at. But again, I'm telling you, um, when you hear one of these things, don't jump off and say, oh my gosh, I've been gaslighted. No, <laughs> in context, um, it might be true. So do not avoid um, looking, have some introspection, yes, because you, you need to be able to accept feedback. Okay? So that's there. All right, so let us run through some more before we get on to how to respond to it. So you're always so dramatic and don't get so worked up. It's nothing. What is, what, what, what's the big deal? Here's one that you really have to be careful about is that you know something actually happened and you're being convinced. Not, not go so it never ever happened. This is really a figment of your imagination. Yeah. Maybe you need to go check yourself out because believe you me, where you get that from? All right, you know you don't remember things clearly. All right, so your memory gone, big problem. You are saying, you know, I noticed something that every Tuesday, um, you're missing at a certain point in time. And I just kind of wonder, we can't find you, your cell phone, lock off, you know, Two hours on a Tuesday, we don't, you know. Um, what are you talking about? No, man, there's no, what do you mean? No, sir. That's, well, you know, you don't know. <laughs> Not, you know, um, it's there. And they're saying, no, 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 there's nothing. Or the yeah, reverse is true. And the hysterical, we know that is there as well. There you go again, you know, you're ungrateful. This one usually comes around when um, somebody is on the re receiving end and dare to ask a question about the hand that is reaching out to them. Let us say that you have one person who is um, at home and the other one working or whatever it is, and whoever would tell the person who is not working to go ask a question about something, and then boom. So next time you just check what you get and keep quiet because you are ungrateful yeah. <laughs> and finally yeah well you know that nobody believes you you know also, yeah none of your friend nobody believes you so why should i oh pray that you'll never end up in a relationship where these things are commonplace in your dialogue okay so there we go now. <clears throat> Appeal to us now. What do you do? By the way, oh sorry, let me stop a little bit. Any questions, comments? You 
you can mic if you want or share in the chat. Question that I have for you is whether you have some clarity as to the distinction between some of those statements and the, the, what we are def defining as gaslighting, where there's a motive, where there's consistency, where there's an um, interest in having a, a different power dynamic. Just want to, if you can, in the chat, say, yes, I get that, or no, I, I need further particulars. If you could just share back for me so that I have some idea that at least we're talking about the same thing and that we're just setting everybody loose now to um, go and talk to the boss and let the boss know that they've been gaslighted or the relationship. So can you type in the chat? Yes, it's clear. No, it's not clear. You can just put yes or no, please. Okay, so we have a bright person. Remember, Grenell says, yes, he gets it. All right, so, okay, somebody wants to understand the power dynamics a little bit more. Okay, I, I get that clear. Go on, let me see some more. Please, just quickly, just write yes, no, or clarify this for me. I don't want to go further before we understand what is happening. All right, so while that is going on, somebody asked about greater clarity on, with respect to the power dynamics. Um, there are two sides to that. One of them, as I mentioned now, it would be a situation where, in, well, when it's, let me talk about different ones. One of them would be work, where the work person, where the, where the boss actually denigrates the employees. They don't give them any power. They're not empowered. They're not enabled. They basically have to come and ask for everything. Yes? If they want to go to the restroom, they have to come and say, you know, it's like prep school. If you put up your hand, ask permission, do whatever it is. So that's one power dynamic. Where in, in that situation, any attempt to self-actualize by asking questions or making suggestions um, is put down. And so by doing that, the boss, the leader, the team leader, whatever you want to call it, um, actually puts themselves in a, in a stronger position because people know that in this environment, I call all the shots. You guys don't have enough, <laughs> I don't want to say sense, but you, um, yeah, I know and you don't know, so just follow. Yes? Um, by the way, Oh my gosh, I'm going to get myself in real trouble here now. That situation also applies in parenting relationships. I'm sorry to say this, but it's true. There is a parenting situation where the parents do not allow the children to ask questions. And do as you are told. Do as you are told. The child has no, quest, no ability to um, ask questions or to explore other avenues. That's also um, a gaslighting situation. If that continues consistently, and what will happen then is that the children that come out of those situations have a difficulty navigating life when they are um, on their own. So that's another power dynamic. All right, let's talk about the, the relationship one is one in where we want, I want to control what it is that we do. Yes, so uh, we will go, how we spend the money, all of those kinds of things, any kind of decision um, is mine because you know that, well, you know, you can't handle money or that for every time you choose where we go, it, 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 it won't turn out so right. So that's another um, one. And it, it, yeah, there are more sinister um, things like the movie where the man actually take away the money because um, he, he has so... Uh, cause the, indiv the other individual to lose their sense of um, being able to make decisions. And so that's, that's where that power dynamic comes in, in the romantic relationship is that uh, you need to trust me. You need to come to me. 
because I am the source and you are deficient in your decision making. The other point now is um, the affection related power dynamic where I so admire you. I so hold, I hold in such high esteem that anything that drops out of your mouth is truth. And any behavior that you do is, is, is I have to deny. I have to do credit, yeah? So after access hallowed, um, somebody would still say, no, it's all right. You know, this is, um, you know, um, an evangelical Christian, right? So that's 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 basically um, what what that that what, what that dynamic is. Right? So, since those power dynamics are very perceived throughout all relationships and seem unavoidable, it is everywhere. Seems that we need to be vigilant in all our relationships. Yeah, of course, we need to be vigilant in all our relationships. That's what I'm saying. But go back though to the to the motive, to the motive. What I said at very, very opening, opening statement is that we do have um, incidents, if you want to call it gaslighting events. It's unavoidable. We do have gaslighting events, but are they persuasive? Do they occur because we want to control the other person? We want to manipulate them? That's the distinction. But of course, definitely, these things happen consistently um, through, through life. And that's why the big warning at this time was to say to you, be careful that you don't walk out now ringing, you know, shouting um, that you are being gaslighted because it happens in relationships of all types. Yes? And then the final one would be lying, where you start to actually lie yourself, uh, lie to yourself because of your affinity to the person. Yeah, so yeah, the key then is, to, is the motive and, the, and, the, and, the, and the, the pervasiveness, the extent to which this keeps on happening. All right? Good, all right, let's move on. Thanks for the questioning. We just want to make sure that everybody is on board. All right, so the first thing to do is to identify the problem. You know, you can't solve something that you don't know. Right? So, and that, that's what we have spent the time here again this time going through to say, what is it? What is it? Brother Andre will tell you that when you see the thing, call it out by name. Call it, identify it. Say, this is what is happening to me. Don't um, smooth it over. Don't hide it, whatever it is. Talk to yourself. Yeah. Be clear. You know, I think that this is a scenario that needs further investigating. I think that I might be in a situation where I'm being gaslighted. Here is a strategy that I'm suggesting. Um, one way to keep reality is by writing down things, making notes, yes? So that you have, when you have written it down, that this thing happened, just start to make more notes, keep a journal so that you can go back. So when the person said, no, son, nothing like that happened, you know, <laughs> um, you can actually go back to your notes or, you know, you know, cell phones are per pervasive now, you know, you might take a, a picture of something. Do, what I'm saying is go into documentation mode so that you actually have some reference points so that you, you have an anchor. That's, that's very important that you can actually go back to data, to information that was written down at, at, at points in time um, to make sure then that when your reality is being questioned, you actually have notes that you can say, no, see it here. On the 14th of August, this happened. You see, this is another Tuesday, this is another Tuesday. Um, yeah, so that's one suggestion, but identify the problem. All right, Andre, coming in or go on. You can continue, excellent. All right, sort out food from distortion, All right? So here we go, write <laughs> down your conversation in a journal so you can take an objective look at it. 
um, and just just see what happens, where where the things are starting to take a turn, right? Just just make make some notes, see how things. Um, I don't want to use the word manipulated yet. Yeah, but how you saw something happening, and suddenly it seems to take a U-turn. At what point? See if you can develop some kind of a pattern for when that is happening. Yeah. Yeah. And this is where it goes. Figure out if you're in a power struggle. Just see if um, you seem to have the same discussion over and over. And you say to yourself, I thought we resolved that. I thought we agreed on this. I thought that, but yet still it comes back again with new twists, with new. Um, and just again, the big question for me always would be in this situation, is what is taking place here empowering for me or my partner or for the other person or not? Is one person being diminished against the other? That's a question. If this is empowering for everybody, which it would be, for example, if I have a deficiency, if I have a behavior um, issue, behavioral issue that needs to be addressed and we have a meaningful discussion around it, that's empowering. That's not gaslighting. If one day I make a little slip and somebody uses that to try and push me down, push me down, that could be qualified as gaslighting. So just look at the scenario and ask the fundamental question, is this empowering or not? Is it empowering for both of us? If it goes in this direction, will one party have more power over the other? Those are questions that I think are very, very helpful. Right? But then one of the things that you have to look at and, and um, there are relationships that people feel trapped in for financial reasons because of the children for whatever reason. Sometimes in that scenario, you invite gaslighting. You, you actually um, so diminish yourself because you can't leave. That's what you tell yourself. And I think some of the songs that are there, I can't live without you. Yeah, you can, I like that. <laughs> That's me. You know, but so much of those love songs talk about it. Yeah. You can, you can. And so fear is a powerful antidote to gaslighting. Is to, again, use your mind. Anybody that hears me talk, understand mindset and what it is, use your imagination, use your mind, visualize. So here it is, sit down consistently, day and night, daydream yourself in another scenario, somewhere where you're far away out of this and create a wonderful new dream environment. Just visualize it consistently, consistently. What that will do is to help you to get to a place where you, know, where you get the courage to know that you can in fact leave. You can in fact leave have to create that environment eh? where you have your own reality, you have good friends around you, people have integrity, people that are empowering you. Visualize that consistently until hopefully one day you get to the point where you are able to release the shackles and move on. Because a lot of people stay in the scenario because they don't believe, they can't visualize themselves in another environment. So how are I going to eat? What am I going to do? What about the children? What about all of that? Think about the other side of being imprisoned in an unhappy situation. Because remember some of the things we talked about? You're unsure, you don't know, you're confused, you're not, why you're not happier? All of those things. Are you willing to put up with that forever? Or can you find a way forward where you find another reality where you can live and be fulfilled? That's a question. So play the mental game until you are ready. But you can do other th things than that. You can go and get counseling. You can go and find people that can help you to get past this blind spot, is what I would call it, where you feel as if, this is the only future. Okay. 
I've seen that situation scenario. Yes. Um, and um, young people, people who probably are going to have to spend another 40 years in that situation. Not good. Questions, comments? Um, feel the feelings, don't hide it, right? All of these things that are, that are happening to you, track, track them. And again, even if you want to journalize them, track them. Since when, you know, let us say you're okay and the car driving and then you suddenly start to not so sure, you know, you just had a conversation with a schoolmate, a friend, or whatever it is, and it's just wonderful, you're laughing, you're happy. Can I drive through the gate? And suddenly, you, you know, you know, want to cut the conversation and, you know, yeah, those, just, just make a note of them and own it, own it, own it, recognize it. Don't just gloss it over and just think it's nothing. I'm not pushing you to be to become paranoid, but what I'm saying is that if you deny these things, then it, you're going to be existing in this scenario without even realizing that there is a problem. So, talk your feelings. I like to believe in that. I think my friend Brother Andre shared that idea that yeah, note your feeling, note when things change, your mood change, your feelings change. Make a note, um, and maybe. Sometimes you might actually see there is a pattern. What was the trigger? What happened before I started to feel this way? You know, I was up and then, yeah. So I actually spend quite a lot of time you know, when, when I'm in that thing to go back and find out what was the trigger. Yeah. So when we talk about stress management, we talk about the stressors and the satisfiers. I want to know what stressor caused me to change my mood. And I go back and then the benefit of that is that you can fix it. So kind of going off the gaslight, I think, but if you just think about that, when, when the change comes, if you can identify the trigger, what was the stressor, then you can either fix it or learn to live with it or ignore it. Those are some of the things that I would suggest. So when the feeling comes, go back, dig deep, find out, find out what is it. And by the way, remember we lie to ourselves. So we might actually um, tell ourselves, oh, it's because of so-and-so, when really and truly we know that's not the real cause. We know that there is a deeper cause, but we don't want to confront that. Go down there, go to the deeper one and fix it. Our work, try to fix it. And it must get my learned brother's input on this. <laughs> Um, one of the things I'd, I'd like to add, um, I'm not certain if it's an add-in, but um, is to say that what, what kind of relationship is this? If, if when my partner comes or my boss comes, you know, um, I have to change my, um, how I act and behave. Why, why, why do I need to put on a mask when, when I'm around you and then take it off when you're gone. Um, mm -hmm. So, so, so should, should this at minimum say something to you about the nature of the relationship? So at minimum, I'm, I guess I'm just kind of stating here that um, what to do if you're being gaslighted? Well, also what for you, what, how, I'm hoping that you all equally recognize the nature of the relationship. Right, right. <laughs> that, 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 that's what I'm saying too. That, you know, am I being true to myself? Am I being true to my feelings? Am I even being true to the relationship? So the fact that I have to, um, you know, re what, what's the word you use? S apply strategies to, to shift your moods. The, the, the fact that I have to do that um, when, when you are around, um, then, 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 that should at minimum say something to you in relation to the nature of the relationship. And then even question if it is um, healthy for you to stay in it. Because sometimes you can find yourself in an abusive relationship. And mm -hmm. start to say, is it healthy for me to stay in this relationship? And, and, you know, um, and what is it doing to me? 
you know, the fact that, I, that as soon as the person come, you know, they have to go pack up, pack up the cards. I don't want anybody, I don't want him to say, we play cards. I don't, want, I don't know, or her. I don't want to say, you know, we don't have fun. Um, or we laugh too much. I, I mean, what, yeah. what does it say about the nature of the relationship? And, and are you satisfied with that? I guess that's, that's the question. Yeah, powerful. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's where we want to go. And so the, the, the six is, is go back to the um, mind games, the, the imagine, imaginary situation, because people do find very painful um, to leave. But one of the things that we need to start to look at then um, is to compare, as you are saying now, compare. Do I really want to live in this toxic environment? Yeah. Do I really want to stay here or... So it's sometimes difficult because remember, depending on the pedestal, the, the height of the pedestal that you have for this individual, it might take you a long time before you start to recognize that it is toxic. Just bear that in mind because you lie or you excuse for a long, long time before finally something happens and the penny drops and you say to yourself, really, um, I might need to. Um, recalibrate and review how I see this person and okay and by the way you see the numbers it's not just relation you know best friend your mother sister brother all sorts of persons can in fact have you in those kinds of toxic situations all right another one is to talk to your friends try to see if you can find some friends we can talk to um, and <clears throat> See what they're thinking about you. Maybe you need to be bold enough to actually ask. By the way, you, you see a change in my behavior. Yeah. Um, and some of the things that you are gaslighted about. Have you found this about me? And ask them, no, and we're not talking to you now in a way that I just want you to say, no, man, that's not so. No, talk to me if it is really so. I want to know. Yeah. So see if you can find some friends who don't have itching ears. Who can actually want to tell you um, what it is that you need to hear? All right, let's move. Come, all right, coming to a close here. <laughs> all right, this is a little tricky one. Um, most of us, I would think, at some point in time, we prefer to be right than to be wrong. And sometimes when we get into um, discussions or something happened to us, we go away trying to rephrase or to recapture the situation in a way that makes us right. So if it's that discussion, we want to come out right. Um, if it ends and we you know, haven't done that, we're gonna go away and try to find some way that we can come out right. Yes. Um, I think that's a problem generally. In this situation that we're talking about, I think it's more important for you to leave the conversation feeling good, feeling emotionally whole, as to uh, as against whether you were right or wrong, uh, or you know that is how it ended up. So let us say that I'm being gaslighted, and it's, and the person is saying, "Well, you know that you can't handle money, etc." And um, they just say they ask me a question about like how much how much are you spending on XYZ phone bills per month? And I don't know. See, see, really, you know, that's something like that you need to know, man. You need to know. Okay. So I might get caught up into whether they're right or wrong, or whether that is information that I need to know. That's that's a distraction. What I need to do is to be able to leave that discussion with a feeling that, fine. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how much I spend on phone, but I'm all right, you know, <laughs> I'm okay. You know, um, I feel good about myself. I don't, I'm not going to beat up myself because I don't know what it is. Um, it's insignificant. It's not life or death for me. That's, that's more important than to go and prove that you're right. Maybe the example I'm using is not the best one, but just understand that sometimes you can focus on being right and winning the argument or making sure that 
what you were saying is so, and that ties you up. Focus more on where are you? So even if the situation turns out that, yeah, okay, fine. That might be true. You need to come away feeling good still, feeling whole, not feeling diminished, not feeling that you are inadequate. That's important. So that's, that's, so some of those discussions, especially in a gaslighting situation, we might have the recurring things over and over that tries to prove that you are less than you are. You can go through them if you want, or you can shut them off, but at the end of the day, you're not internalizing it. You actually are making sure that you leave feeling good about who you are. That's important. But that is part of the way that you can keep your sanity um, and um, your self-esteem. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna to come to um, the chat in a little while. Let me just finish these two, and then I'm going to um, invite your comments. As I see a chat there, I'm gonna get it to you in a minute. All right, the other big one is that you can't control anyone's opinion. Yeah. So even if you are right, you did, you'd know for a fact that this is the case. Um, and you try your best to put forward your arguments, but they can decide. Yeah? I can decide that masks are helpful. Somebody else can say masks gonna kill you, you know? Um, so <laughs> get to a place where we understand that that's, that's the case. And if you have, have a partner, you have a boss, whatever it is, we see where the money is being wasted because the way that you're doing it. And you know, Tyler tell me, supervisor, okay. Um, at the end of the day, you cannot force them to accept it. What you need to do is to control what you can control, which is you, your well being, and your mindset, and all of those kind of things. Your mental health is important. So don't stress yourself over the fact that the company is wasting the money and you have told them many, how many times to do it this way or somebody is in a relationship or your brother or you, whatever it is doing this. At some point in time, try to get at peace with yourself with it uh, because you cannot force people to accept, which leads us then into the last one, which is to have compassion on yourself. The key in all of what we're talking about, because what we're talking about here is manipulating you so that you actually um, have mental issues if you want to look at it that way, where you start to doubt yourself, etc. The key here is to keep yourself safe mentally. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to call it quarantine, quarantine your brain, your mind, so that you don't get run over um, by manipulators and so on. All right, so um, we're gonna spend the rest of the time looking at some of the feedback we have here. All right, the short one is gaslighting can be considered a ticking time bomb. Um, <laughs> beautiful how you light it, okay. So yeah, that's a comment. It's not as, I don't want it to be as scary as <laughs> it might sound. You just have to be aware because as I say, it's something that flies under the radar. So you might not be aware of what is happening, but at the same time, I don't want us now to get paranoid on everything that happens. You know, we, we start to um, get nervous that we are. What I would definitely say though, is that if you're entering into a, a relationship, uh, you know, with a view to have a long-term relationship, we have, you know, coming to your family center and the church of Christ. So we're expecting hopefully that you would go into God's um, <clears throat> plan for a family, which people would actually get you know, married and live happily ever after. If you are seeking that kind of relationship, just, just spend a little time, just, just try to get to know the person and just, to, just see um, how the decisions are made, how empowering is the conversation, um, where, where, where there are disagreements, how those things are handled. That's, that's important, right? And also, Go back to one of the earlier ones where we're talking about the relation, the family. You know, when you go to um, the, the, the other party's family, how, how are you treated? Are you treated in a way that 
Are we empowering? Those are questions that we have to ask. Yeah, the sessions are being recorded. Um, our announcer will tell you where to find it. I think he's gonna probably type it in the chat as well. So you can actually see the entire series right back from the beginning, I, 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 most of them anyway. Uh, no, the beginning pre-COVID was physically there. All right, so Jasmine is saying, gaslighting can happen privately and publicly. One might not even recognize that the relationship is toxic, but a good friend can sometimes pick up and identify what is really happening and start asking questions that give you that support. Brilliant, that's what we're saying. So we need to have um, relationships, healthy relationships. The relationships need to be fun, but also, trust me, we also need to have persons who can point out issues to us. Say to them, hey, you know, what's going on here? Believe me, in life, we need, um, you know, a couple of those persons who can speak truth to us in love. Right. So that's where we want to go. So it's St. Andrew Church of Christ, right? That all of that org slash media. St. Andrew, Andrew Church of Christ dot org slash media. All right. Any other questions? The mic is open. Floor is open. Um, while you're considering that, we just want to um, jump ahead of our announcer to invite you to our worship service at that 77 Radius Road or online. Link with us, be please. Oh, you can use the same link, sorry. Same link. Um, and we start at 9 a.m. tomorrow. And we have our midweek Bible class on Tuesday at 6.30. And in the meantime, our next Navlai session is the first and the third um, Saturdays. So the next one will be the 5th of December. Okay. Comments, questions, suggestions? I have a suggestion. Please. <laughs> Um, that folks who might folks who might uh, have low self-esteem and I know it was mentioned earlier and even depression but especially low self-esteem can uh, make themselves available almost or, or I'll put it this way not, not necessarily make themselves available but but the gaslighter can see it as an opportunity rather to, 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 to definitely use them because they might have low self-esteem. And so one of the things to help yourself or to, to limit as best as possible, the opportunity for you to be gaslighted um, is to believe in your own abilities literally to believe in your own abilities and, and, and not necessarily feel like you have to get approval, approval from, from everybody. You see, you, see, you see, once you go on a platform where you need to hear from, you need your validation from everybody around you, then, then, then it looks like everybody's in your skin. <laughs> Huh? And, you're not, and you're not into your own skin. And so mm -hmm. one of the things I just want to, 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 to say is that um, a person's opinion of you doesn't identify who you are. If you seek an opinion, just, just look at it as, as, as an opinion that you seek. Um, if persons start to get into the habit of saying you should, you, you need to and you should, then, you, you know, um, you, can, you can no thank you it. I mean, I invite you to listen objectively. You know, um, but, but especially in our culture, we ask somebody an opinion and, and they share the opinion like a fact. <laughs> and just the way it is delivered to us, then, then we start to second guess e even our own um, opinion about something. And all we were just trying to do is just to get a broader view so that we can have our own conclusion, so to speak. And, but, but sometimes we might do that and... And, and just because it, the way it is shared to us, you know, 
um, you know, folks are very demanding and commanding and, you know, about, about how they feel about something and, and they insist that you hear it and hear it this way. And, and then it cover you into fear and then you're like, okay. And it's because they talk loud. That's right. You, you know, it, you, they feel like they are the authority. Right. And, and, and so in a sense that even the tone of the voice can also make you feel gaslighted too. You know? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go there and tell you about that. Yeah, yeah. All right, let me stop. Let me come. <laughs> oh, no, no, I'm going to go there because I think also the, the um, behavioral side, so the person might not even have low self-esteem. It might just be their behavioral preference. So <laughs> you, remember, you wanted to open that door the last right. time. <laughs> so let's just say persons who are what we call the S type, which tend to be inward looking, submissive, peace, you know, they don't want to push forward, they don't want to take um, charge, etc. That can also open up the possibility that because they develop a, a, a habit within the culture, you know, the relationship, for example, where they are saying, no man, it's okay, because it's a polite thing to do. No, okay, I, you know, because I am, I'm comfortable with, with whatever decisions, because that style, um, believes, you know, one of the philosophies that God give us sun, God give us rain, and we just have to stick, you know, um, whatever is out there. So they're not fussy, they're willing to um, sacrifice self. And so if it comes to a decision, no, no, you decide, you decide. And then after a while, that becomes ingrained. So even though it's not a low self esteem situation, it's, it is just a behavioral preference. Um, Set aside, set against someone or who is more dominant or who wants to take charge, it could actually end up where there's a de facto gaslighting situation, even though um, the motive is not there. So I don't want to call it gaslighting, if you understand what I'm saying, though, where, where one is consistently um, um, giving, giving the instructions um, and the other one is, is actually minimizing self. So that, that's, that's a situation where they are healthy persons, don't have any self-esteem issues, but because of behavioral orientation, they actually end up where the situation mirrors a gaslighting thing. The only difference would be motive. So yeah, so you open a good door there, so. Um, the, um, excellent. The, the, the other thing I will, I will, I will, unless somebody is wanting to say something, I'll, I'll you know. Um, the, the mic is open to them, but go ahead, Andrew, please. Okay. The, the next thing I would want to encourage folks to do so as to, again, limit the possibility of being gaslighted um, is also to, um, to say, listen, you know, I am wonderfully made by Almighty God. <laughs> Hey, hey, you know, say, I am wonderfully made. You know that I'm a good person. You know that I'm an important person. I'm saying sometimes we have to start to value ourselves and um, rather than asking people to value us. You know, we, 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 we come from a culture, or I should say an environment, where we seek validation in order to feel valued. Well, maybe we need to start to cut down on that a little bit. <laughs> You know, and, and to start to value ourselves because the more you value yourself, um, you value what you think, you value your opinion, you value, you value your knowledge, um, you know. Um, so, so as a result of um, what you have done and, and what you have discovered, then, then you pretty much can determine your outcome. As a matter of fact, that is self-efficacy. You know, um, and 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 we had shared on that already. Where mm. Mr. Bandura, Albert, Doctor Albert Bandura, where he said it is a person's belief in their own ability, <laughs> you know, um, to, to to achieve. You know, I believe I can. I know I can. Yes, I can. If you understand what I'm saying, um, that is self-efficacy. Um, in also in relation to competently deal with an individual task. So one, it is, I believe I can manage my life. And two, I can competently deal with an individual task. That is self-efficacy. And so 
if I believe I can, then really you can gas, you can light a whole <laughs> gas station if you want. <laughs> But and I'm not saying that 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 I'm going to be resistant to knowledge. Or I'm going to resist be resistant to feedback. Or I'm going to be. But but once it comes at a place where it feels like a put down, or it feels like me not have no sense, or it feels like me, I'm being stupid, or you know, then 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 there so. That's the point where I, I can say no, thank you. You know, yes, no. It it, it is it is becoming a little bit too personal now. Mm -hmm. I feel a little bit too forced to, you know, rather than I have the option to, you know, I feel a little bit what too forced to, rather than I have the option to, and so some and 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 that's all I'm saying. Once we can take some some take some of these positions in context, of course, then um, then we limit ourselves of being gaslighted. That's, that's, and, and, and so I, I, I absolutely love nine and ten. I believe nine and ten, right here that you have on the screen here, um, actually either answers number eight or deals number you know, with number eight. Nine and ten, spot on. You know <laughs> that you can't control any, anyone's opinion, even if you are right, and also that you must have compassion for yourself, and, and not necessarily asking permission from other persons to give you compassion. If you're in pain, you know. You have to look to relieve yourself of it. Okay, hold on. All right. Um, Nikisha, you wanted to say something? Well, I think I mute the wrong person. Hold on. Well, the Andre, did I mute you? Sorry. Nikisha? You were up. Okay, sorry. I saw your mic open and then you wanted to speak. All right. Yeah, so brother Andre, that is the ultimate one, you know. If you just be strong in what you know to be true, what you hold to be true, I'm not saying to be stubborn and to be um, unmovable, but if you can um, be, have a sense of what is right, have a sense of what is true, have a sense of who you are, those things make you more gas, um, gaslight proof, <laughs> right? All right. Um, says, as in what ways can persons find a support circle to transition from these toxic relationships? Sometimes aloneness and isolation seem to um, trap, help to trap someone in a relationship that provides basic sustenance. Um, I'm not sure what others would share, but I find that a healthy church community like we offer at St. Andrew um, helps, you know, because again, motives are important. Um, the values that come across in the um, advice that you get makes a difference. But you want to get sustainable advice. Um, sometimes we run to persons who provide us with information that really and truly not sustainable in terms of healthy relationships in the long term. So a, a church community is, is, is one area that I would say that people can find support uh, in. I know it's COVID time, but we also do meet online. Um, so we can start there and see where we go from that. I don't know if anybody else, Brother Andre, you want to suggest other circles, but there, you know, and then Phillips, Felicia says, should there be an a, amount of chances to be given to move forward together after being gaslighted by your spouse? Well, we actually believe, well, gaslighting is abuse. It's not physical abuse, but it is abuse. So, but we actually believe that marriage is something that, you know, to, to, till death you, should, you, should you pass. So you should actually try and find ways. Um, if you can't work it out um, internally, then you can get again support from, um, your community from, you know, persons in church, or you can seek formal um, counseling from people like Brother Andre. But yes, I, 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 for one, like to believe that people should try to work through their relationships. You're going to have bad patches, but at the end of the day, that's part of it. Yeah. Um, Brother Smith? Bad patch at work. You don't just get up here and put your bag right away, right? Especially if you're getting good money. Um, yeah. 
let me I, I don't know if I can address both questions in, in this one in this comment, but as far as even the planning the transition, you know, from toxic relationships, um, one of the questions that I think folks must literally ask themselves is if I'm in pain, do I need permission from you to relieve myself of it? So let me say it again. If I am in pain, do I need permission from you to relieve myself of it? You know, I, I, it, it, it's a very important question for us to, to, to decide um, what is it that I'm going to do going forward. And, and, you know, the minute I feel like the gas, I have to ask the gas lighter permission to relieve myself of the painful situation, then, then really and truly, um, I'm going around in circles. I'm not doing anything about it. That's so, 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 so I'm saying here, um, maybe, maybe an important question that you need to ask yourself and, and, and not even people making that decision for you. Because if you still allow people to make decisions for, for, for you, then, then you still put yourself in a subservient place where you possibly can get gaslighted again. <laughs> okay? Um, so all I'm saying here, um, what, an important question that you need to ask yourself, do I need permission from you to decide to relieve myself from pain, to relieve me from pain? If I'm in pain, do I need permission from you to relieve myself of it, if I'm in pain? And if the answer is no, then, then from there, we can start to, 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 to come up with our, with, with, with our own vices, if I can use that word, um, in relation to the things that I can do or will do to bring me the, t the type of emotional comfort rather than emotional abuse, okay? The emotional comfort rather than emotional abuse. So I believe it begins with asking that question um, as against I giving you any advice. <laughs> But, but it's an important question, I think, is, is a good place um, to start. Uh, so I hope I, um, to an extent, to a small extent, may have, may have said something about that, that question about the transition. And the next question now, um, chances. Well, actually, what I just said probably is, is more, speaks more to the second question, to the next question rather, than probably the first one. But uh, you must know, as you have to know, you know. So you have to know, um, is this enough, you know, um, or, 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 or do I find myself um, in, in what is called the cycle of abuse? Remember, the cycle of abuse speaks to the, 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 the tension phase, um, well, the honeymoon phase, the tension phase, and the explosive, and the explosive phase. So the three phases of, 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 of abuse or the cycle of abuse, honeymoon phase, the, the tension phase and the explosion phase. Um, um, honeymoon is where you're telling the folks, hey man, um, I'm so sorry that I did this and what have you, and can you forgive me? Um, um, can, do you think God will even forgive me? And, and you know, you make all the grand, grand promises. And so you feel good and say, okay, then fine. Um, the tension phase now is, is where you're, you're saying to the person, hey, I'm tired. Is, is, is what you're causing me to do? It's a whole heap of gaslighting coming tension phase, folks. That's all I'm saying. In the cycle of abuse, a whole lot of gaslighting goes on because it makes you feel like you are the reason why I have to do these things or, or, or I have to behave this way. Um, um, so that's the tension phase. And of course, you know, the explosion phase is um, where... Since we tired of talking you now, this is the action, but remember says you're, is you are the reason why I have, to, I have to do these things to you. And then of course, the honey, go back to the honeymoon phase again, where I say, I'm sorry, that's why I call it cycle of abuse. So you, you have to know whether, whether or not you see you find yourself in that vicious cycle. And one way is to ask yourself, the, the, the question is, do I need permission from you to relieve myself of pain? Yep. All right, so we are out of time. I want to thank you. We want to have our announcer, <laughs> our guide, take over and just bring you up to date on some announcements. Um, I want to thank you for supporting us. Thank you very much, Ashley. Um, I think you have
Brother Smith and Brother Alan Casey for the excellent presentation that you gave. Um, we truly look forward to the next presentation, which will be on December the 5th, you mentioned. And so we will mark that in our calendar, December 5th. We also invite others at this very same Zoom link tomorrow at 9 a.m. We'll be having our worship service. And so we invite you to an inspirational, motivational lesson and to join us in divine worship tomorrow as well. Also, a matter of um, announcement, we'll be having a um, gospel meeting on the 13th to the 15th of December. In December, so you can put that in your calendar. Um, set aside the time, it begins at 7 p.m. at this very same Zoom link, how you got here. Um, December 13th to 15th, um, the theme will be simply Christians. We examine the topics of, um, you know, the, the relevance of Jesus, Christianity, and um, what, why baptism. And so please mark those dates, the 13th to the 15th of December. Thanks again for joining us for these, this engaging discussion. And we look forward to our next session on December the 5th. Um, but this time, we will have a word of prayer, and then we will break. Almighty Father, we thank you for this discussion. We pray that the things that were shared will encourage us, will bring enlightenment, and we pray that God that through our lives, um, you will continue to guide us, and we use these lessons in practical ways in how to live. Pray for those who are suffering in the pandemic. We pray, Father, that we're able to reach out in various ways to provide support. Continue to keep these things we have through Christ, and we pray. Amen. Thanks again, and have a good evening. Right. Please remember that you can actually invite others that you, that you feel might benefit from this. You can go to centerandrewchurchofchrist.org slash media to access the replays. Should be up in a little while. All right. Thank you. We are blessed to be able to serve you and hope that we can make a difference as you navigate life.
And oh my God, he's able. He's able. And oh my God, he's able. He's able. And oh my God, he's able to carry me through.